Hello and welcome to the fifth part of this webcast lecture about Karl Marx. We ended part four by discussing Marx's definition of socialism as the social ownership of the means of production, either by worker cooperatives or by the state. The state would, uh, in a socialist society, serve the purposes of the proletarian class um, and the state would be used to own the means of production. The purpose of this is purely political, to wage class war or class struggle against the bourgeoisie. Without their ownership of the me means of production, the bourgeoisie are nothing. They are no longer a historical force and simply uh, disappear. Ultimately, Marx thought that the socialist state would then wither away. It's only there to wage this class struggle against the bourgeoisie once the bourgeoisie no longer exists. Um, increasingly, um, the state would be not a significant factor in people's lives. It would wither away. It would become, as he puts it uh, in Das Kapital, um, the administration of things rather than people. Ultimately, the end game he sees as um, communism. So socialism he sees as a transitional phase towards the ultimate goal of history, which is communism. Communism is very, very similar to Kant's idea of the kingdom of ends, where everybody is treated as an end in their own right and not as a means to an end. So there would no, be nothing like employment or exploitation in economic terms in communism. It's also very like Hegel's idea of a perfect organic society, where there's no need for laws because everybody will always act in a way which is consistent with the good of all. So that's communism. Uh, but again, for Marx, um, difficult though this might be to believe, uh, communism is not a utopian abstract idea or a principle to be aspired to. It's a realistic and in fact necessary goal of uh, the historic processes he's been studying. So socialism and communism are very different. Socialism is only a transitional phase where the state abolishes the bourgeoisie. Uh, it will gradually fade away as worker cooperatives, other forms of communal organisation, self-governing communal organisation um, of housing, of transport, of distribution and education. So housing estates or you know, areas of housing would simply be run and administered by the people living in those houses, etc. Um, all of that would be going on in socialism as he sees it. The fact that uh, real socialism, when it came to be in the Soviet Union, was a terrible authoritarian nightmare is a, an interesting problem. But nevertheless, in the work of Marx, socialism is this transitional phase where the state steadily withers away and is replaced by communism. Communism is, uh, and that would be the main difference, so communism and socialism are very different, Communism is characterised by there being no state at all. Communism is also, Marx thinks, very like the state of nature. We've discussed that before. It's a big theme in political philosophy. What is the state of nature? What were people like before the state existed? In other words, in prehistoric, in prehistoric times, cavemen, if you like. Now, Marx is very much like Rousseau in this respect. He thinks that communism, uh, sorry, state of nature, which he calls primitive communism, um, people were essentially happy, as it were. In, in, it, it's nothing like Thomas Hobbes' idea of the continuous war of all against all. Marx calls Hobbes' view of the war of all against all, so you need a necessary state and police force and authoritarian rules. He calls that the atomic theory of bourgeois society, where, like in Smith's idea of the hidden hand of the market, everyone's competing with each other. Marx and Engels, who wrote more extensively about this, thought that um, prehistoric society was more likely to be uh, characterised by cooperation of various sorts. And unlike Thomas Hobbes, uh, Marx and Engels did have access to some data, to some in empirical information, because anthropology in the 19th century had discovered and was beginning to systematically discover such Stone Age societies as still existed around the world, such as in Borneo um, and also in, uh, in North America. Uh, when we think of the North American Indians, we think of the Plains Indians who were nomads and lived in teepees. But there were others who lived in settled communities of long houses. And these long houses were actually rather characteristic of, st of real Stone Age society that could be observed. And in these uh, long houses, the system of social organisation is very like communism. There's no 
uh, there, there's personal people have personal property but they don't have private property that the agriculture the fields the the productive things that they have rudimentary plows or whatever are seen as uh, communal property and nobody would dream of uh, owning own, owning the plow that was associated with the longhouse and and kind of uh, charging people to use it so marx's idea is that human nature is communist that pre historic society before the state was communist and therefore the communism he's talking about uh, is a higher form of communism and in its very very hegelian terms what's happened here is that in the beginning mankind was communist it went through this period of alienation of war and conflict and class division and ultimately man is reunited with its uh, nature in higher communism and how this is achieved is because of the pro the political self-awareness of the proletariat which becomes the universal class the 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 class in the the struggle of bourgeois society that ultimately encompasses everybody because the dynamics of capitalist society towards monopoly towards merger of companies is to ensure that everybody ends up in the proletariat everybody ends up really owning nothing of the means of production and dependent on selling their labor power so capitalism has revolutionized feudal society abolished its class divisions capitalism is a tremendously powerful positive historical revolutionary force for marx because it creates the proletariat and the proletariat is the whole of humanity without any class divisions and this class once they realize who they are will be capable of leading a proletarian revolution and this will happen on a worldwide basis with no further divisions of class no divisions of nationality and the proletariat will become self-consciously the whole human race and will re-inaugurate the kingdom of ends the organic society rebuild the garden of eden on earth